Hello and welcome to On The Clock, presented by Workstream. If you care about hiring and retaining hourly employees, you're in the right place. I'm Daniel Blazer and today I'm clocking in with Michael Hartley, Director of Operations at Golden Ticket Cinemas. Michael and I discuss how things have changed in the movie theater workforce over the past few years, why it's so important to create a positive employee experience, the power of listening to your team, and more. Oh, and we also chat briefly about his favorite movie of all time. Enjoy! I'd love to hear why you love your job. Movie theaters are, are a very important cornerstone in, in our communities. It's a place where people go to bring their families uh, to, to realize their traditions and to sit together and watch a story be told. And uh, I take a lot of, um, don't typically want to use the word pride, but I take, I, I take a lot of effort in making sure that that is the best uh, experience for the, for everyone to enjoy. And, you know, you, when you, when it all works together, it, it brings an experience that customers remember for, for decades, for generations. I mean, I think everybody has that kind of moment when they were a kid or where they met their significant other, uh, they went on their first dates, you know, it's just all these different things, um, really revolve around the movie theater experience. And, um, and, and bringing it, being able to bring that experience to the community is uh, a, a very important facet and something that uh, we take a lot of joy in. Yeah, I absolutely have some of those uh, movie theater memories myself, um, just like you said. Um, and I have to ask, just because it just seems right, do you have a favorite movie of all time? Maybe that's an impossible question for you. No, it's not an impossible question. I, uh, you know, in terms of a, of a favorite um, I, I, it's, it's hard to quantify that. I always have a top like 10, you know, I think that's kind of everybody. Right. Um, but if I had to resort to one above all others, it would be, um, one that, you know, when I grew up as a kid, I didn't have cable or anything like that. And so we just used Turner television, you know, TBS, whatever showed up on the little antenna box TV you had in your living room. Um, and the, one of the most common films that would show up was Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark. And as a direct result, it didn't matter if I seen that movie a thousand times, me and my dad would sit there and watch that movie every single time. So that's the one I got to give it up to. That's a good one. I love that movie. As you look back over the last, you know, couple of years, uh, you know, you, it seems like you got a couple years before all the COVID mayhem and then a couple of years after um, can you talk about like some of the staffing challenges that you faced, you know, over the last 18, 24 months? The evolution of our, uh, our societies have, have changed quite a bit in that time. Um, and people have different expectations when they want to come to work. The, the climate for employees has shifted so drastically that you can almost, it, you you can't really go anywhere without hearing of your local businesses having staffing concerns. Um, you know, being indoors and and going some through all these experiences that we went to, I think that people have been very hesitant to go back to work. Um, and the ones who are hesitant, they um, don't seemingly want to be as engaged as they once were, you know, movie theaters used to be kind of place for those for, for, for first time jobbers, you know, like someone right in high school, that's their first job. They want to come and sell concession stand stuff and watch movies all the time. I mean, you know, high school, college, uh, it was a very common place for that kind of applicant. And it's not anymore. It's changed a lot. You, you see far more adult, uh, mature, individuals who are just trying to get uh, a job and in a paycheck but everything from um, minimum wage increases and the competitive markets of various types of businesses uh, used to be you could come to a movie theater and you didn't mind making minimum wage because it was uh it, it was the experience working at the movie theater um, and it was like I said typically for people with you're coming into their first job. Uh, but nowadays it's, um, it's, it's shifted so much that 
you know, used to be a, a dollar and a half difference between, you know, your closest business to then the movie theater, but now it's, it's, it's double. And so theaters have had to make a drastic shift in, in payroll expectations and standards. Um, and that impact is just still being navigated. You know, it's, it's your, you were, once you would have a, a file full of applicants. I mean, we used to just for years had just did paper applicants. People walk in, want a job and give them an application and they fill it out and you file it. And it's not like that anymore. You know, people aren't interested in looking for a job that way. That's for sure. And they, um, you know, everything's got to be fast. Everything's got to be quick. You know, it's not like a, you know, paperwork and then you got a talent pool you can go through or anything like that. Um, you've got to, you got to keep, keep, keep applicants kind of flowing into your building because you are, you know, you, you might get an employee who might come in and be engaged for a few minutes and then they, and then they quit. Um, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. It's a very unusual, uh, a time for that, uh, where, where the drop off is a little bit more than, than expected. And, and, and it's very market based too. It's very strange, you know, one market it's doing very well. And then the next market, it's not doing so well. And then, you know, you take that a, a month later and they're all going to flip flop. So there's just kind of, um, a, a constant evolution and anomalies there that we having to all navigate. And so this is, a an important topic for sure. Yeah, that's really interesting info. You kind of touched on, um, you know, retention a little bit um, from your perspective and your role. Like what are the, you know, the key factors that improve retention among hourly workers? For, for years, I calculated to a simple uh, explanation of giving the employees an experience. You know, I, I can tell you, that anyone who's worked in a movie theater remembers being the usher, being the projectionists. Oh, I used to sell candy here. Um, and they actually say it with a lot of pride as well. Like I used to do this here. Like I was young, it was one of my first jobs. I mean, so working at the movie theater was an experience. I mean, we used to do late shows for the crew, right? Like, I mean, we'd all come in together as a team and watch the new movie coming out and we would have popcorn and sit there and relax and have a good laugh and, and then get up and get to work, you know, and, uh, we'd all be tired and exhausted the next day, but that was kind of all part of that culture. Um, and that was what it all came down to was theater culture. That's what people looked for when they came and worked for the movie theater was, it was being to experience that culture, being able to be the first ones to watch the movie and, you know, have all the popcorn you can possibly eat. I mean, you just fill yourself up with soda and popcorn, right. And, and discounts and stuff like that. Um, you know, so these were all kind of just really awesome things for, for people to really absorb into their life and have something to talk about. And it wasn't, you know, the ex retention for an employee was hand in hand with bringing the guest experience. You know, it was all about the culture, you know, customers come back to your theater because of the culture um, and, and employees like working there because of the culture. But the shift nowadays has changed drastically to uh, it, it, there's, there's seemingly something missing in the workforce where the inspiration to work hard is actually not as easy to find as you would think it would be. It's there, uh, but it's taken some time. And I think a lot of that may be played in hand with just, we all kind of enjoy being home a little bit more, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to argue that. Right. But uh, that, that anomaly uh, has been a, a reverberating uh, downside to the hiring process, I would say. To kind of uh, go into that a little bit more. Um, so, you know, this conversation, part of our conversation will be released as a podcast. Um, and a lot of people that listen are, you know, in HR, recruiting, different people that, you know, are also facing probably some of the similar challenges that you're talking about. Um, do you have any advice or any perspective on like, 
how to rekindle that work ethic or how to increase employee engagement or any of those things that you're talking about? Have you kind of started to find recommendations or solutions to some of that stuff? I have actually. Um, I have an excellent answer to that. It's, it's to listen. Listen to your people. Um, they've got concerns. They've got needs. I mean, when you talk about increase in pay rates, that means everything is going up and you have to listen to that. Um, you have to care about your crew. You have to care about what their concerns are and you have to care about making adjustments that are outside the normality of what you're used to. I mean, we're talking about decades of running movie theaters and what worked yesterday doesn't work today. Uh, you know, part of instilling that culture means that we first and foremost listen to them and, and we, you know, you can talk about incentivization, you can talk about giving a discount or, you know, just chalking up another 50 cents to their pay, right? You think we think that that's what makes our staff happy, but most of everything is the, the capacity to listen to your people, listen to your team, treat them, treat them like they're human beings and listen to every bit of the feedback. I mean, sometimes the answer is going to be no, right? I mean, that's just, it's a unfortunate byproduct of the ecosystem that we're currently having to deal with a lot of it also is is being patient um and we have to exercise a lot of that as well and i think that's something that uh, permeates through every level in just about every company right now is we have to be patient and we have to listen um and, and we gotta we gotta sincerely care if we can if we can do those things your crew will care they will honor you for that that that's a, a great word of wisdom. I really like that. Well, thanks again, Michael. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, my pleasure. Anytime. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for listening to On The Clock. For more info, visit workstream.us slash podcast. I've also included a link in the show notes to connect with Michael on LinkedIn. Until next time, we're clocking out.